What's up everyone? This is Rob with Animus Visual Reviews. Today I'm actually just going to be talking about filmmaker topics. Um, I've had a lot of friends that are getting into filmmaking and they have a lot of questions. And of course I've been able to answer a lot of things on Instagram, Facebook, what have you. Uh, but there are some things I think I wanna talk about from a beginner level standpoint that I think are key to learning how to properly shoot images. In today's episode, I want to talk about something very important called white balance. So what is white balance? In essence, white balance is technically what and how your camera perceives the color white. So for the most part, we consider the light coming from the outside as being daylight. And of course, there are incandescent lamps or tungsten lamps that are indoors. A lot of times the orangey looking lamps are called tungsten. So your white balance basically will range between these two values. I mean, of course they go outside of that spectrum all the way from 10,000 Kelvin, which is a very cool light um, or way warmer like 2100 Kelvin, which is extremely orange. So somewhere between this range is where you want to balance your camera. Now there's creative ways to balance your camera. If, for example, if you're going for a certain look, these are key things that you're gonna to wanna to do, especially when shooting on an eight bit camera, such as a Sony mirrorless, lower bit rate cameras where you're not shooting raw, you really wanna pay attention to nail your white balance and get it, in my opinion, as close to the final look as possible. So what are we talking about? In this example, I'm shooting this video purposely with different color white balances so that I can show you what happens when you white balance properly and when you white balance incorrectly. So right now I'm being lit by several daylight color temperature lights. Uh, behind me, however, I have two lights that I set up to be tungsten. So these are be 3200 Kelvin lights. As you can tell in the main camera, which is white balanced to these, I am properly white balanced. However, my background is not properly the white balance because the lights that I have lighting me are balanced to 5600 which is daylight and the lights behind me are at 3200 which is tungsten so as you can see in the main camera the lights behind me are kind of yellow and I am actually being properly white balanced now in this camera here I have a different white balance so this camera is actually white balanced at 3200 Kelvin meaning the lights behind me should look white and to an extent they are, as you can tell in this camera, just a bit. Uh, however, as you can see, I am very cool. So that's what happens when you white balance improperly. Now, I say improperly loosely because there are times where you may creatively choose to white balance incorrectly. A lot of times when you're trying to shoot day for night or when you're trying to push blue into your scene to make it look like nighttime or moonlight, you may want to balance on purpose at a lower Kelvin rating. So for example, I may white balance my camera at maybe 2,500 Kelvin, 3,200 Kelvin, anything warmer. I may have a light that does 6,000 Kelvin if it's one that I can change the color temperature on. There are other facets of white balance that I haven't discussed yet. For example, magenta and green. These are huge shifts that could happen to your light. So a lot of times and way back when I started shooting, a lot of LED lights were not looked as quality because they would have green or magenta shifts. A lot of people would see a green tint to your lighting when using cheap LED lights. So that has pretty much been eliminated with the advent of high CRI lighting. Uh, there are still some times where you might get a green or magenta shift, but a lot of lights now come with a green or magenta adjustment in the lights, especially if they're RGB adjustable, which are starting to come out pretty much from every brand. I wanna show you some examples of white balance and pretty much what it would look like when a camera is balanced to a certain light or a certain color temperature, or how you can choose to creatively white balance your camera to get a stylized shot. So let's take a look at that. Behind me, I have lights that are RGB. These are the Nanlite Pivo tubes, which are actually really awesome lights. These are set right now behind me at 3200 Kelvin. So those are balanced to a tungsten color temperature. Uh, and again, in front of me, I'm being lit by Kinos, which are at 5600 Kelvin or AKA daylight. So what I wanna do is basically show the difference in the color temperatures between these lights and how the white balance that you set your camera to affects what your final image looks like. Most of this information can be disregarded when we're talking about RAW. You wanna still try to white balance correctly in camera, even if you're shooting RAW. However, in RAW, you can at least adjust it when you get into post-production. This applies for RAW photos especially, but also for RAW videos such as RED, Blackmagic RAW, things like that. So now first I wanna show you what happens when we cut off these 5600 in lights. Uh, again, main camera here is white balance to these daylight lights. And behind me, we have tungsten colored lights, which is why the background looks warm and I look properly white balanced. So we're gonna go ahead and cut these off. And now I'm gonna go ahead and cut this light out. This light is also balanced now to 3200 Kelvin, again, tungsten. To the main camera, 
This looks exactly, I've changed it. So now I'm being lit entirely by Kelvin, uh, so now I'm being, so now I'm being lit entirely by 3200 Kelvin lights. So behind me, we have a 3200 Kelvin light. And right here in front of me, I have my Nanlite Pavo tube set to 3200 Kelvin as well on my white balance. To the camera, these lights will look warm and to our eyes, they will actually look warm. Again, they're balanced to an incandescent temperature. Uh, however, depending on how you set your white balance in your camera, your camera will perceive white as a different color. So for example, on this camera here, my white balance is set to 3200 Kelvin, meaning this color temperature light, which is warm to our eyes and warm in opposed to daylight, will actually look correct. So right now I am perfectly white balanced on this camera because it is set to be even at 3200 Kelvin, which is the correct match to this lighting. So on the flip side, I'd like to turn off all my 3200 Kelvin lights. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that now. So now I'm being entirely lit and only by 5600 AKA daylight color white balance. So what happens is this, my main camera is white balanced correctly to my daylight colored lights. So I should be properly white balanced. However, my second camera here is again, still white balanced to 3200 Kelvin, meaning these lights are going to look entirely too cool. Uh, these will also be matched to daylight, meaning I take this camera white balance at 3200 Kelvin outside and my entire image will look blue. A lot of times beginners might get a camera and their white balance will be set incorrectly. They'll go outside and ask why the camera looks so blue. 90% of the times your white balance is set improperly. Uh, and again, it will look a lot cooler outside because you're meant to be white balancing to a daylight color temperature, which is again, around 5,600 Kelvin. In general, most lights that you purchase that are one color will be daylight balanced, um, which is probably the most common. Back in the day, we used to have a lot of tungsten lights, you know, like uh, Redhead, RA650s, 1000s, 250s, those are all tungsten color temperature lights. With a Fresnel lens, they get very hot. They're usually referred to as hot lights. They were all a 3200 or tungsten temperature white balance. So now again, most LED lights that are single color will be daylight temperature balanced, or they might be bicolor. So you can actually switch somewhere between a lot of times 3200 and 5600. Uh, some go a little further on either part of that spectrum. Point is you can balance between a tungsten and a daylight color temperature. So now we'll take a look at another example of how you can creatively use white balance to change your image. Now just a quick sample of how having a cooler white balance can affect the mood and tone of your image. Um, I just wanted to make it look kind of like moonlight. This is no additional grading or color correction added, just straight out of camera and how using the right or wrong white balance can change the overall mood of your image. I unfortunately did not do an outro for this one. So um, yeah, see you guys later.